This video was made in consultation with Daniel Garlett and Robert Eggington. So off to the protest here to pull up Rio Tinto on their actions of destroying the Duke and Gorge, desecrating Aboriginal land. Just another corporate giant pulling minerals out of the ground that we are all using. I get that part. Employing a, a heap of Australian people. A lot of FIFOs are out there mining with a conscience. They want to work with the Aboriginal people. This is cultural genocide. Rio Tinto came like a thief in the night and blew away a site that held human occupation evidence for over 46,000 years. What do we want? Land rights! When do we want? Now! Land rights! Now! This is just horrendous. Hey, yo, we listen to the stories as the elders again explain how your culture flourished before the Europeans came. For I'm why it's important your strength must never wane. For you guys need the spiritual like dry land needs rain. See contemporary traditional come together on stage. Guitars weep and drummers thump in this savings rage. Her fear, frustration, escape the poverty cave while homie digits echo deep from a forgotten age. Observe the women dancing, weaving to sing a song. Histories, mysteries from which it all belongs. I'm from the Wajak uh, tribe, nation of the Noongar people. Wajak is right here where we are in Perth, all of the Perth area. Then on my mother's side, I'm from uh, the Baladong tribe, which is uh, back in the Wheat Belt area. And that's Johnny, my son. I'm from Wajak, so basically Perth. My mother's country is Yamaji country from Wadri, and also my great grandfather, which is Nanda. Forget urban landscapes, go back to where you were strong Search for hidden answers from which your spirit longs Hearing me black performance cause vast crowds to sway Soulful mesmic lyrics put broken hearts on display but So how did Rio Tinto get away with detonating a 46,000 year old site? Back in 2010, probably to about 2012 there were a trial uh, amendments made to the Aboriginal Heritage Act in terms of the Section 18 process around uh, significant sites of Aboriginal importance. Uh, when I was at the South West Aboriginal Land Sea Council as a regional development manager for two claim areas, which was the Wajak, which is the Perth area, and South West Pajara, uh, Pemberton, uh, Margaret River, that area down in the south, I was in charge of those areas. Uh, those changes were automatically uh, put into place. It's time to stand up and fight harder, as we have always done. <laughs> the amendments and changes to the Section 18 in 2010 was only supposed to be for one year. Changes to make it a lot easier for um, ministerial approval to go ahead and destroy a sacred site anywhere throughout Western Australia. After that 12, 12 months, that's where we find ourselves now, another 10 years on. And I think every single uh, Future Acts matter that went before the Cultural Materials Committee and the Aboriginal uh, claimants statewide, every single uh, sacred site with a Section 18 has been destroyed. There's not, there hasn't been not one that has been saved. There's not, there hasn't been not one that has been saved. The WA government and mining companies have taken it upon themselves to blow Aboriginal country to bits under loophole amendments to Section 18. We demand the immediate termination of Chris Salisbury as CEO of Rio Tinto. A means to survive From which no I ascribe A culture on display Celebrating indigenous ways This is a crime of atrocity to the environment That is on a global scale And should be dealt with Under the international courts of law 
against crime of intent to destroy the uh, environment that holds absolute historical significance that this global monster here destroyed in moments. Coming from the younger generation, like, you know, I was pretty much bore, born into this and brought up that way, just knowing that, um, yeah, these, what are they, what are these companies doing to um, sacred sites and sacred lands? You know, it's sad to say how it is, but it's pretty much normal for me. Yeah, with the years to come, I'll do pretty much anything. I'll be willing to do anything I can just to keep it alive. And it is sad seeing sacred sites uh, getting blown to bits and whatnot. But um, yeah, years to come, I'll do whatever I can to keep it alive. They acquired it illegally through massacres, removing our children and imposing restrictive measures to oppress and control us as a people. I now pay and suffer and absolutely shame. Shame on you. dispossession and disconnection denied us our right to practice our culture and to speak our language. Nothing has changed. This is still happening today. Hey, when we tell stories, our boys come here. On the ground. As Aboriginal women, we can no longer practice our culture when giving birth on traditional birthing sites and the role our women, our mothers, our sisters play in this sacred ritual. Our women are extremely oppressed by a patriarchal Western system that shows little respect to women overall, let alone Aboriginal women who come from a matriarchal society. Only 14.3% of Australia's total land mass is Aboriginal land. That's the land that government doesn't want or need until its worth is discovered. Aboriginal people will never be compensated or reparated for the loss of land, for being dispossessed because the government cannot afford the amount of its true worth. Always us, always will be Aboriginal land. I'll put you in front of me. Put the bill with the the white-eyed gentleman, the rainbow serpent, me eyed gentleman, four-eyed nigger, white well nigger. Poor gentlemen, poor, not out for noise. All our people are dying through what's happening. We're living in hopelessness, racism, alcohol, drugs. My people are being murdered in prison. So we must stand together. And it's good to get up here and say that there's a memorial in my 80s. I don't know how long I've been going up that hill there, Parliament House. With Robert, Ralph Herbert, great father, Clary Isaacs, and all them, Len Colburn. We carried coffins up to Parliament House to tell the Parliament people that we're dying. And we're still doing it. They're all gone, and I'm still here. So I'll keep going. As I said to ABC, we're going to be in their faces all the time. We're not going to stop. Always wait. Always wait. Aboriginal land. Always was, and we've been sold out by our own people, government people that work in there. Please. We can't be trusted. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Not bad for somebody who's in their <laughs> We've come this far to see uh, how dangerous and how very, very easy it is for mining companies or, or a minister, uh, Ben White, to agree to uh, destroying a sacred site. 46,000 year old uh, cave up in the Injibundi uh, country. That's where we find ourselves today because of those amendments that were made without any of the claimants. The land councils, uh, board members and directors uh, having any knowledge about those changes to the Aboriginal Heritage Act which makes it a lot easier to destroy sacred sites. We have no record 
of the PKKP asking us to stop mining in the Jukin area until mid-May when the blasting was already loaded. We delayed the activity of the blast to see what, could do, what we could do to stop it, but after a safety assessment of the situation, we had to go ahead. At no point did we deliberately set out to harm or disrespect the PKKP. This is not in line with our values or the way we do business. And that, people, is what we call lies and crimes against humanity. It has been found that Rio Tinto knew about the extreme significance of these caves. Mine has got to stop! That was one of the most incredible protests I've ever been to. Oh, bugger. I'm on the exit of the freeway, right. Somebody let me in, somebody be kind, somebody be kind, somebody be... Thank you, thank you. I was honoured to meet Daniel and Johnny and I was pretty amazed to hear about all of Daniel's work and getting fired from the Southwest Aboriginal Land and Sea Council for speaking out against amendments that were made in 2010 to the Aboriginal Heritage Act. The amendments to Section 18 were supposed to be temporary, but the amendments have stayed in till now 2020. Because the Aboriginal Heritage Act is, is being reviewed at the moment, it doesn't matter what they do in the review. Anybody can just walk in any time and make an amendment and uh, head out to bomb some more ancient cultural spots. This guy working at the top of the Department of Ab Aboriginal Affairs, he's an Indigenous guy. He's basically past all of this bombing that Rio Tinto has done. Aboriginal people speak for themselves, but I am just passing on the message that I learned here this afternoon, which is just because somebody is Aboriginal, it doesn't mean that they get to make decisions on behalf of all the Aboriginal people. Token blackfellas is what Daniel was saying. If they've sold out on culture, you don't get to be at the top as a black fella making decisions for other black fellas. Yeah, cool, good protest. My grandfather was a pauper. My grandfather was Tommy, Rover, Dollar General. He started the first robbery ground in Western Australia. It's still there today. Yeah. Full blood. He fought for the full blood here in Western Australia. The last property ground representing the heart. The heart's of the story. Anyone you come from there, you come out up under the front river. And you come down the front river. Yeah. And you come to a place called Eric the Mark. The stepping stone. And as he is, you come to the stepping stones and you know how to deserve to walk to this island. History is there, and the history goes all the way up to, up to the hills where they took the artifacts. The mighty cup took the artifacts. The mighty's got to stop taking absolutely.